last time I introduced uh, Fortin's height for abelian variety defined of a number field, and then I introduced various conjecture about the Fortin's height. The mainly is about upper bound of these conjectures, and uh, it is obviously a very difficult conjecture. So we hope uh, for some abelian variety, we actually can compute uh, these Fortin's heights. As I say that. In contrast, in geometric situation, the Fortin's height is basically a cohomology invariance or Hodge theory. In number field case, the Fortin height is not, and uh, so there's no direct way to compute that. So we make a restriction on the CM abelian variety, and uh, we hope for CM abelian variety we can do something. So on CM abelian variety, there is a striking conjecture by uh, Colmes. He basically says that the set of the Fortin's heights of uh, CM abelian varieties are essentially um, equal to the uh, uh, derivative of uh, logarithm of uh, uh, CM out in error function. And this is uh, the striking because it's, I mean, uh, uh, we, have to, we actually have no idea even for special values. And then his conjecture about the derivative. And um, then, um, then this conjecture, even this conjecture, is, is, is hard enough for us because there's a, in number theory we have no idea how to handle Artin error function. For example, is Artin conjecture. For example, even assume the Leland conjecture is become automorphic, but they, we don't have any um, uh, nice way to compute special values or derivative. So at most we can do abelian case. So uh, this error function abelian. Then, uh, the strikingly enough, the abelian, if you think about only abelian CM uh, thing, uh, that's still hard. So we do quadratic one, the simplest one. For quadratic one, then this is corresponding to uh, the average uh, height of CM abelian variety. When CM field is fixed, you change the type. Then, um, then this is a, uh, um, it is one that is what we call the average Colmes conjecture. But the way, there's a two way to prove this conjecture. One is it's my, uh, the work, I uh, reduced this work to prove this work of Yuan, Xing Yi Yuan, uh, in 2008, which uh, is the extension of the proof of Grozagi formula. So, in that way, we reduce the computation to Shimura curve. There's a second way given by uh, the, in the so called Kudler program. So they reduce uh, their computation of Shimura, uh, the abelian variety, the heights of, of CM abelian variety are uh, even bigger uh, Shimura variety. So there's two ways. One's increase dimension two to the G. One's decrease dimension to G equals one. So you have two different ways, two extremely opposite ways. So today I want to introduce the two different ways. So i give you a basic idea. Two days ago, Goal is to show that the average of the average of Fortin's height of CM abelian variety uh, with uh, is essentially equal to uh, the height. Same point and a Shimura curve. So this is a pretty interesting thing. Uh, there, so we have this SG, the so Ziegler modular space. You know, it's a H of G, SP to G, and this is a big variety. So you see M point, some point there, on this variety, and it's average. So it's basically you fix E of F is fixed. CM, then you consider all the different types. Right? So that's all the points. Then here you have a, a bundle, Hodge bundle. Right? You do this thing. And the other side, a Shimura curve is completely opposite. You start with, uh, so this is, uh, is a variety dimension, it's very big. G, G plus one divided by two. 
So that's the one, I mean, presumably you suppose computer fault in the height here. Then somehow the computation is reduced to a curve. So this is the upper plane modular a gamma. The gamma is a discrete subgroup of the quaternions. Uh, it reduces the computation at one single point. And this is a process that's very interesting. So how do you, uh, the both of them is a Hodge bundle. At x here, omega x. So you have a one Hodge bundle here, the one Hodge bundle there. You compute the falling the heights, and there's a big variety. You cut down the computer falling the height, I mean the height, uh, for one point and re with respect to this line bundle. Another interesting thing is that uh, this one is uh, something called a PR type, Schumer variety. This one is not. This one does not parameterize anything, even not a Hodge structure. You parameterize a Hodge structure in infinite level, but not in the final level. At the final level, it doesn't parameterize anything. The reason is that uh, the, there's units of the sort of real field will have non trivial action, fixed point at every point. So you, will not you cannot parameterize anything. So, this, uh, um, so there is a, there's something. I mean, I, in the last year, when I found a proof completely accidentally, even right now, I have no basically intrinsic reason why these two things can be equal. So, this can be done by two techniques. Um, there's a two ingredient For, uh, to reduce computation of the high dimensional variety to the one dimensional variety. One is the decomposition of Hodge bundle. So it's a decomposition fault in the heights. The second one, of course, is deformation theory. A piece of a group. The reason is, as I said, that I mean, this side has a billion variety, this side does not pick up anything. But if you allow to have infinite level structure at the very, very top, it will parameterize pieces of groups. It's not a parameter at the beginning. If you give it's a higher high level structure so that your units of f act trivially. Then there are payment is something. And uh, then the comparison between Petersburg group, you can compare the deformation theory of Petersburg group of abelian variety of Ziegler modular space and the deformation of Petersburg group of Shimura curve. But this one is not trivial, it still needs to be used in. So this is use a hot structure, complex. Height structure. So this uses PLD height structure. So uh, this is a, this is a classical thing. This is a new thing, not completely developed in the last few years by Broy and Kissing. So. <coughs> So that's a, it's a, it's just a coincidence that both complex hot structure and periodic structure are used essentially for this purpose, but for totally different reason. So this one gives you integral structure, this one gives you the complex hot structure. I will not talk, spend too much time to talk about this part this because this is a very technical, so I will spend the time talking about the complex hot structure. Then I will try to move. Uh, Trying to move, how can I uh, move the discussion from Ziegler modular space to Schumacher curve? Okay, so this is uh, uh, so this is just the introduction. So the first one, the decomposition. Fault in the heights. So, um, so what's going on? I assume A. Um, well, I mean, at the very beginning, I don't really need it to. A can be any 
I believe a relatively complex number, but I don't want to introduce too many notations. So we still set the abelian variety variety uh, over number field. But I mean, uh, this number field here does not play much role. And we assume that A has a uh, action, OE action to anamorphism of A. The E is a number field. So uh, this is um, it's pretty well known that uh, this E is either CM, the either CM or uh, totally real, right? Because uh, because of the polarization there, you can show this is pretty easily. Not an arbitrary number field can be embedded in the morphism ring of A because this thing has the evolution inside. Yeah, it's a field. It's algebra, you can say, it's some of them. So then uh, we, we assume that A of OK is a narrow model. A narrow model means that it's a canonical integral model of spec OK. So that um, was described I mean, it's a, by narrow. So uh, we can see the differential forms, differential one form. It's defined to be omega A of OK one form. So this is differential one form. And of course, then there's a, there's a Hodge bundle is essentially a determinant of this bundle, right? So we want to compose this thing in the one sense. So we have action by O of E acts on this bundle. So this is a bundle of rank G of O of K. Well, so then naturally, you want to decompose this action. So assume that uh, K contains all uh, conjugates. Of, of E. I mean, uh, what does it mean? This means the homomorphism from E to K. Uh, well, this, 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 uh, this is actually a cardinality. I mean, this algebra is at least equal to the degree K of Q, um, E of Q. Right, so you have many sin there. And OK. So you assume this is true, then we can decompose this thing there. Uh, we can decompose this to so-called eigen component. So for each uh, uh, tau, so for each tau uh, from embedding from E to K, we can uh, form the, uh, the I mean, the, this has action by bundle there. Then we have. Uh, we can form this O of E turns O of K to O of K. So I will still denote this as top there. But notice that uh, this, this omega A has action by both this ring and this ring, right? But for this ring, because an anamorphism, for this ring, because I'm a one of differential one form of this base, right? So you can use this one to define a component. So uh, let's define the, the notation W. A to here defined to be the this eigen component, so it's a, the formally defined as the tensor product of O E tensor O K go to the O K of tau O of K. Right. So this is a O K bundle, it's still a bundle. Over O of K. And uh, then we have a amorphism vector bundle. Vector bundle is that omega of A goes to the direct sum of these bundles. All right, so we get this uh, thing. 
So if you want to take a determinant, you're taking determinant you will get omega of a q out of the tau determinant omega a of tau. Of course, here uh, is a convention that if omega a tau equals zero, for example, if tau does not appear in the, in the, in the eigenvalue at all, then uh, the determinant of this thing is completely trivial. Right? So this is the uh, same there. And uh, this is, uh, is a morphism of line bundles, it's a non trivial morphisms. So this has a metric, right? And uh, we hope we put some metric here. So there, so omega a has a metric, right? I defined it last time just by integration, it's uh, what we usually call the integrate for the Peterson product. Integration of abelian variety, right? Because you have this is a, this is a G form holomorphic G form, right? Holomorphic G form wedges conjugates integrating abelian variety give you a number. And uh, but this side is just a piece of it, right? There's a piece of it. We don't have a very person product for piece of the one forms, right? So this is not G form. This is a part of the some small parts. But if your A has a polarized, you do have it. Because once they polarize it, this has a metric. The special one form has a metric. But I do not quite put a polarization there. So I have a two choice. Either I work on only um, uh, the abelian variety with a polarization, or uh, usually I, I don't like to do that. I just forget about the polarization. If I forget about polarization, I have to work on the abelian variety and I do abelian variety simultaneously. That's a typical situation where you do representation theory. You, to create a real number, the only way to do it is take a dual pair of vector space. Right? So, so what I do is that um, uh, there's a determinant omega a tau does not have nature metric. Yeah, to solve this problem, We bring a t, so this is a dual abelian variety of a inside. Okay, so the dual abelian variety, a dual abelian variety. Then we have the same thing. We have this omega a over t. Also has a, you know has a morphism to direct sum omega a over t over tau. And uh, my um, the dual abelian variety also has action by O of E tends to O of K, right? So it's uh, by thin there. Again, this is the same thing. I have omega A over T goes to tensor product omega determinant. I can choose the omega there. I don't know why I didn't use that T there. Again, we have this stuff. And uh, the interesting thing is that even this one does not have canonical metric. This one does not have canonical metric, but they have a pairing together. So that's that's something we need. So there is um, okay. So so there is a canonic Hermitian pairing between omega of a omega a of t and any complex points at any place. Sorry, I write, let me write v inside here. No, it's OK. At any complex place, v of k. So this is I'm going to describe. But this is a purely Hodge theory. So there's nothing, not a very difficult to describe. So the idea is the following. The idea is that. Um, idea uh, this uh, omega a of v is equal to uh, well it's just uh, omega a of a tensor v c right so I just described there 
this is equal to the gamma AV is a holomorphic one form. And omega A over T can be described by the dual space. So this is uh, um, so this is because we can write down these uh, uh, the dual abelian variety uh, using the following um, parameterization. Yeah, I mean the dual abelian variety. If you remember, uh, when you use a check homology, right? It's uh, H one X G M, right? You take the Lie algebra becomes H one. Uh, this V is H one. Something is H one of um, of A V O A V in the, in the, in a naive sense, and H one A V Z. I mean here has something like that, and uh, the, this 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 part. Um, so this part you can write down as so you can write this as H one zero of A V, right? No, sorry, it's, uh, holomorphic. Zero one, uh, your one zero, and uh, but this one is a zero one. No, let me see. Um, zero one dual. This is uh, this is uh, yeah, of dual there, yeah. Because this is H one there. This is the Lie algebra. It take a dual. Okay, so this is uh, so this is uh, by I mean that they, this two has a, a pairing, right? One is a complete conjugation of other, so naturally this is equal to well, this is a dual of that, so it's a complete conjugation. So this is equal to gamma omega A V uh, conjugation then transpose. You get a two of them, right? Your first conju the conjugation. If you have v, if v is over c, v bar is v turns to c c by conjugation. Okay, just a conjugate, right? And uh, so you have a conjugation plus the dual. So this means that uh, there is uh, there is a canonic. Uh, Hermitian pairing. Uh, between omega a v, omega a v, t to complex number. Well, this is a, is a way, but it, <laughs> actually, this it can be done by a different way. The different way is a uh, over a v cross a v. The dual of a v there's a Poincaré bundle. A Poincaré bundle there's a Chern class one one form. You can use that one one form to take a duality. That's another way to think about it, right? So 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 anyway, you have used this in. Okay, so this uh, we get the uh, a pairing. So this pairing is a functorial. Uh, so in a sense, if you have a billion variety, say, if I have a five from B to C, uh, this is a billion variety of a complex number. Then you will uh, you will have the if you take a pairing over uh, this uh, over B B really mean this pairing so this one is equal to gamma um, uh, that take a dual then pull back beta. Over uh, over C, right? So you have this. Uh, it's a very uh, nature uh, functorial, functorial property. So the functorial property, if an abelian variety has anomorphism by O of E, then I can decompose them. Right.
Okay, so yeah. Another thing is very important. So um, another thing is uh, it's a more than. I mean, uh, it's an interesting thing is that um, well, these pairing different number there. So another thing is interesting. So if you have alpha inside. OK, so if you take, let me try to take determinants. Um, we also get a pairing omega of A tends to omega L over T to complex number. Here, uh, we have a, a, a metric defined uh, when we define the is height, right? Uh, uh, here is similar. So you're wondering, we, I have a, uh, this is a one dimensional vector space, this is a one dimensional vector space. I have, this has a norm, this has a norm, and a parent also have a norm. So it must be some compatibility. The compatibility is pretty clear as alpha beta equals alpha beta. Okay, so that should be naturally true. Otherwise, it's a, it's a bit strange. So, okay, so that's the, uh, that we have there. So this is the one thing. Second thing, so the action. So this is the Hermitian pairing. Let me, what I said, OE, um, O of E uh, acts, acts Hermitian, it's, uh, it's uh, the action. O O E on omega of A, omega A of T is satisfies the following property. Satisfies the usual one. Uh, say I give a, a, a element there. Let me how can I say? Um, give A times x y will be equal to x. A bar of y, this should be something naturally true, right? Um, but this is a pairing there. Because of this reason, then uh, we remember when we decompose this into eigenspace here, then the above pairing will induce um, the above pairing. So the second one induces that uh, a nature. The pairing, the omega a v, omega a v to to c uh, is a direct sum of the pairing omega a v tau, omega a v tau c. The complex number. The tau of C you call the tau composite C. Do you remember at the beginning I say my E is either CM or totally real? Right? In, in a CM case, the C is a complex conjugation. C is a complex conjugation. E is the identity if E is totally real. Or the complex conjugation if E is so you get this pairing there. That is great. So finally, we decompose uh, this differential one form to a small piece. A small piece, I have um, this metric there. Okay, so, so we get this pairing there. So now we defined a one dimensional vector space. The norm Na tau to be the tensor product of this, uh, uh, the space determinant omega A over tau tensor determinant A transpose, I mean the dual abelian variety tau C. And uh, 
we define this bundle, and uh, this bundle has a metric, right? It has a metric, and uh, and and uh, and and the metric uh, given by uh, given by uh, the above pairing. So great. So we decompose. We hope to decompose the the fourteen height small piece for a billion variety. It does not succeed. But what do we do? We do a pair of abelian variety, A and A dual, then succeed. That's strange. The reason is in a periodic place, we don't need to do that, right? The periodic space, we integral structure automatically give us this one. Uh, but uh, at the accumulant place, we have to do that. So that's a, a kind of a not uh, uh, analog to each other. You have to bring the abelian, the dual space in, right? But this narrow model doesn't depend on polarization. That's the whole point, right? Narrow model is giving you integral structure, but you don't need to use in polarization to define narrow model. But for Hodge structure, Hodge structure does not have metric. It has a metric. It must come from some color metric, right? So that's uh, uh, something um, not very balanced. OK, so, so in this way, uh, we also can define a partial of height. height. Uh, as uh, the degree of the two, so the k twice k over q of degree of this bundle a over tau. I, I keep a two here because I keep telling us that this is the average of two pitch, right? Okay, so um, I sec finally succeeded to define uh, for the height of a small piece. And uh, this, uh, uh, this definition uh, works for any abelian variety, not necessarily for abelian variety with CM. This actually is quite important because for any abelian variety, because eventually we will study Shimura curve or, or peer type or, or, or Shimura variety, then this decomposes automatically there. And uh, but about for CM abelian variety, but I guess probably it's true. So if, and now we assume that, um, now we assume A um, has CM of type O of E of phi. So if we assume that, of course, then of course the neck and A tau uh, is trivial. It's, it's a trivial bundle with a trivial bundle. If Tau is not in phi, right? Because I said that uh, everything is zero. Yeah, zero vector space. Zero vector space determined to define as a trivial. Right? And uh, so one proposition is important. So we have the so following. So for tau inside of phi, we have the, um, we have the following properties. Let me see. Um, So first thing is, there's a height a tau uh, depends only on phi and a tau. So this is a, um, a refinement of Comet theorem. Comet theorem says the falling height depends only on phi. Now I, it depends a pair, a CM type of phi and one element inside. The second part, of course. So there's a summation. So there's a fall in the height of A if you uh, divide by all these of tau there for tau inside of phi, uh, where I want to compute the difference. You see? My, uh, there's a bundle I here, go there. I put a metric there, but I, I cannot guarantee, I mean, even this morphism of a finite place, right, is not necessarily injected isomorphism. So you could have some problem from finite place, periodic place. But this is com actually is computable. This is equal to uh, a simple formula is equal to negative four times k over q, uh, the logarithm d over phi 
d o phi c. Uh, that's a weird thing. So uh, this is the discriminant, partial discriminant. So <laughs> so when you when you have a, a number field, a computer discriminant, they usually uh, if it is uh, generated by one element, they remember it's just the, uh, the, the difference of different conjugation multiplied together, right? So that's called discriminant. And partial discriminant, I only do it in phi. Phi is a 50%. So in other words, originally you have how many terms? g squared minus g, right? Uh, divided by 2. Now uh, originally you have 2g squared minus 2g divided by <coughs> 2. Now I have g squared minus g by 2. So it's, a, it's not half, it's much smaller, right? So it's, it's just like one of these, they take care of uh, everything here, but now you only take care of this part. Another one take this part. So it's a really partial discriminant. So the strict definition, I didn't, I mean, uh, uh, in my paper, I didn't really define it very well. I, I, let, let me suggest one definition. So I. I hope it works. Uh, I suggest the following definition. I have O of E turns to O of K, right? So remember, all this, uh, this, this type of phi is O inside here. So this, is, uh, this, this phi defines a representation of O of E on a vector space. V over phi and O over k, right? With this phi there, right? And uh, then my O over e, O over k, of course, acts on this V of phi of O over k, right? I, this acts on this thing, right? Because there's a work space there. This acts. So in other words, this has an amorphism uh, of this thing. So I, I let R be the image of this morphism. Uh, so this R has, uh, has OK inside, right? My suggested definition we are following. Suggested definition will be discriminant at D of phi um, equal to uh, discriminant Of R, I mean somehow is a ratio. So um, divided by, let me see, discriminant. Uh, discriminant. This thing will be discriminant E discriminant K. Let me try and stand. Discriminant of O of E of K will be the DK I get a field extension. Um, I forgot some powers, probably divide by discriminant of O of K. So maybe this is defined by some power um, of, of one over G. So this is probably is a proper definition of this partial discriminant, right? So this is the order. Once it's the order, of course, you have a discriminant, you have a trace, right? So this is discriminant you have R turns to R to Z by trace map, then you, you define the discriminant by that one. So this should be the discriminant of phi. Anyway, it's just a partial discriminant. Right. Okay, so this is uh, uh, there. So it's a pretty nice formula. Now, uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, it's a very interesting thing. Now, um, I start to uh, introduce another thing. So this is just decomposition. But this decomposition, it gives you some good hint that my fault is the highest of a billion variety is uh, I mean, even the g-dimensional, I make a one-dimensional. 
one dimension piece, then you can think about this one dimension piece may be something to do with, with the Shimura curve. So this is the second thing I want to do. But before I do the Shimura curve, the Shimura curve is, uh, is I will do Shimura curve period type. There must be parameter of some abelian variety. So the next step I want to do is um, I will define the, the fault in the heights. of nearby uh, CM types. So what do I really mean? So I give a definition um, a two CM types, of course, fix, fix E, yeah, fix, fix a CM field. E, two CM types, phi 1, phi 2, of E are uh, are called uh, nearby nearby to each other. For example, nearby to each other means that they <laughs> they're almost the same same type. They differ about only by one element to each other. If they differed. They differ by one element, right? So that's uh, something I want to do. So basically, the cardinality of phi one, phi two equals g, right? So this is uh, um, the degree of g of two g. G minus one. Uh, it's equal g. That's completely same. No difference. So somehow, I want to study two abelian varieties. So OK, so let, ta, let tau i equals, well, the phi i take this uh, intersection, right, out. So, so we have uh, this uh, h of phi 1 tau 1 plus h phi 2 tau 2. So somehow, I want to add them, take an average. Uh, oh well, later on, you will find there's a good reason why I want to do that. I define it as uh, uh, the same type. It's a, it's a small piece. Now we add two of them, uh, take an average. OK, so I give this a name. Uh, called um, the H um, phi 1, phi 2. So I get a two CM types. OK? So this is a, a, it's a good thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a very strange uh, combination. But certainly, you can define any two CM types. I just define this way. So uh, some, some facts, OK? So the first one is pretty clear. This thing, h of phi, all this phi, is the average of this thing. Average 2 to the g minus 1. Average of the nearby same type, so it's, a, uh, it's, it's a different, right? It's a slightly different. Of uh, h. Phi one, phi two, minus one quarter log of discriminant. That's very interesting. So uh, uh, you get a two CM types. So one CM type get a nearby CM type. Uh, the second one is a very important. Um, it's this uh, H phi one, phi two is an isogeny variant. So what I really mean um, is the following. So the, fo the, the, the second fact is a very interesting thing. 
So it means that um, so if a zero uh, is um, is abelian variety of OK is abelian variety. Uh, with multiplication by uh, a variety of dimension 2G with multiplication by O of E of type um, um, phi 1 plus phi 2. So let um, if A0 is isogeny, isogeny is to A um, phi 1 cross A phi 2, OK? Suppose my, so, so this abelian variety already much bigger than abelian variety before. Um, then, then the interesting part is that the, the height of phi 1 and phi 2, this originally becomes one half the height a phi 1 cross a phi 2 um, of tau. This is actually equal to one half h a 0 of tau. So this second fact basically means that when you compute the CMIB variety, usually the isogen is pretty sensitive. But here, actually, it's not. If you put a phi 1, phi 2, you can use anyone to compute it. So this gives us a lot of freedom to compute uh, the fountain height for a nearby a CM type. So you don't really need to restrict the, the, direct, the product of two CM abelian variety. You can, you can change a little bit. So the one thing we're going to use is the following. So in, in the lecture, uh, We're going to use the, the CM abelian variety as follows. We're going to use A0 defined as follows, constructed as follows. Constructed as follows. So there, so we do the following way. Uh, so we, what do we do is, so so fix, okay. So let tau remember. So that once you have a phi one, if we fix, if you phi one phi two, of course I just say it give you a tau one tau two, right? This is the complements. But tau one restrict an, an f equal to tau two restrict an f, right? So these two will be equal because they're both the same types. The same types when you, 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 you differ of one thing, when it's written on the F, it should be completely the same. So I give this, this name, give a name called a tau. Right? So so from this tau, we can construct. Uh, so let the, I mean uh, from the tau we can concede uh, the the quaternion algebra. of B of F, whose ramification set of B, uh, at least at the Achaemenian place, at the finite place, I don't care. At the Achaemenian place is, is all the Achaemenian place, is all the uh, ramification set, uh, all the tau um, sigma divide infinity, right? That this is the place of F. But sigma not equal to tau. So in other words, the ramification state is everything, but not tau. So in other words, the B is definitely the quaternion at all other places except the tau. Right? So, so we also can see it. Um, we also can see the, uh, the following thing that we also assume there's embedding E embedding to C. Assume there's embedding. Once you assume embedding, then B is naturally have two piece. Right? It's quaternions. 
two pitch. G of x uh, equals x bar of j. So x inside e. So that's a quaternion, beautiful thing, the quaternion algebra, just like the usual thing. It's, it's a non, so, okay. So we will decide, uh, we will compute, we will define uh, d turns the real numbers, right? Equals e turns the real numbers plus, um, well, we have e turns the real numbers of j there, right? We have, we, this is the thing, direct sum. So here we have a complex structure phi 1. Right, put a complex structure. So this is isomorphic to c to the g by phi 1, c to the g of phi 2. So I get a two complex structures here. Right? So I just uh, simply put a complex structure like this one. Then in this way, I will make uh, a billion variety, a complex torus. So this gives us a complex torus of a zero equal to b times a real number O of b. Okay, so the O of b is any, so O of b, a maximum order of b, but we assume this is contain O of e. Right, so that's the, um, but this is a this is a complex torus. It's easy to see from a construction. The complex torus is isogenous to a one, a phi one, uh, a zero, uh, is isogeny to a phi one, direct sum a phi two. Right, because this is a phi one there, the a phi two there. So I just construct. The only difference is that I use OB. That's the only thing changed. Right. So that's the. So this give you uh, a simple way to relate it to uh, a pair of abelian variety to this thing. So this give you good reason why I can say nearby. Same type. Right. So this construction bring you uh, one. Uh, Abelian variety with a double the dimension, right? And uh, also with action by OE. It has a same type, phi 1 plus phi 2. So this action A0 has a phi 1 plus phi 2. It's isogen to the thing. If I drop this condition, if I say I consider all abelian variety of dimension 2G with action by OE of CM OE phi 1 plus phi 2, then this modular space is a Schumacher curve. So this gives you the, the idea that A0, I mean, that's a funny thing. A0 is the same point, you say, it's a zero modular space 2G, but actually it lives in a Schumacher curve. So this is something I want to talk today. So, so now we want to, so let's, um, 2.3, so we want to talk about Schumacher curve. of P R type O of E phi one phi two. Right. So there so you can think about Shumra curve as a, like a same I believe variety is still the same. And uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, the basically I will construct the same I believe variety by dropping this in. So but this a0 uh, has the P R type P means a polarization. So I needed to define a polarization. Uh, and the morphism, same thing, is just like that. So let me define this stuff. So I fix. Um, so let V be a B psi. So B is the quaternion algebra I defined it before. Psi is a simplectic form. So I, I pick up Psi carefully. Now remember when you, if anybody read Tanyama Shimura's paper, there's a way defined as a, the polarization, you, you choose one element in E, which is imaginary. 
So what we're going to do is, uh, is a simplicity form uh, defined by uh, of the form of the this way is a psi u v equals trace f of q and a trace b of f. So this is a reduced trace of gamma u v bar. The gamma is inside e, right? Cross and the gamma bar equals negative gamma. So this gives you a simplicity form. Okay, so uh, then, uh, you, then I need some positive condition because I couldn't construct a billion variety. So I want to simply form is a positive type. So this means that I want uh, this psi uh, u um, uh, u i inverse uh, will be greater than zero for any u inside um, this v of r, right? Oh, I'm forget about that. Before I'm talking about that, I need to define the complex structure, right? So v has a v has a complex v r has a complex structure. Defined as uh, you know here the same kind of structure here, right? Of right there of phi one plus phi two, right? So you define a morphism v of r. So one the complex structure I can talk about multiplication by i. I define this thing. So this is uh, the typically way to find a modular spectrum of right of the abelian variety. You need a let you need a vector space. You need to have a, a, a complex structure. You need to have a simplicity form. You have everything, right? Okay. So now I define a modular problem. I let f prime be the reflexive field of phi one plus phi two. So this means that f prime is generated by of a q trace phi one plus phi two of uh, x. For x inside e, right? It's just the, so. This is the inside c. You define a field f prime. Then um, so the ob will be a maximum order as I before, and the oe contain ob. So this is basically so I I I mean the. For uniformity of language, I write it lambda equals OB uh, as a lattice in V. So somehow I, I mess up their, their use of V and a B. The reason is the following. When I write a, write a B, I, I always keep in mind a B has, a, has action by B itself, right? Has a B module. When I view it as a V, I view it as a so this is viewed as uh, as a e vector space. So I will drop the action of b there, right? So I can purely consider it as a v vector space. Conversely, for any Hermitian space of e, if it's a type of phi one, phi two, always come from quaternion algebra. So there's no much difference. It starts with a, a quaternion algebra, but starts with V. So, there's, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a phenomenon in GR2 theory. In GR2 theory, there's very many different ways to describe a Shimura variety. You can use quaternion, you can use Hermitian space, you can use orthogonal space, you can use the simplicity space, of course. But all of them same. So I, 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 here I dropped action by B there. So let make them more precisely viewed as a left left e vector space, right? So if I read the left vector space, the multiplication by OB at least is the right action. Right? So it's not a bad idea. So you can, you can, you can, you can, uh, you see this way OB will act on anamorphism of E of V, right? So from right action. Maybe it's opposite algebra, right? From right hand action. Okay, so that's uh, basically the, the data. So now we define a modular problem. 
Okay, so so for any, so we define that there. Oh, if you are doing that, I need to describe uh, some space. Um, so once I have this space, I have a, a beautiful thing. I consider g of u v per psi, right? So this is a, a unitary thing there. So this is equal to um, all elements g inside g l e of v g x g y or maybe across g l one over q, right? Uh, this is over Q. Now, what I mean, Q cross there as algebraic group, right? So we're not going to write on there. So G lambda there equal to lambda x and y, right? So consider as as an algebraic group. Over Q, right? So it's algebra over Q. And uh, this is very easy thing to do. So the const very construction I'm doing here uh, give you uh, the following um, abstraction. So actually, actually, uh, if I write G prime here, define this thing. The G prime uh, is actually isomorphic to at least the Q is isomorphic to. Um, is a B cross and uh, an F cross and an E cross uh, uh, defined by norm, norm, norm is inside the Q. I, 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 what I really mean, I mean this is, a, so norm equals inside the Q really means that and the B, E, the reduced norm of B times the norm of E is inside Q cross. And uh, then uh, this is the strangest thing, how this thing acts on this space. The action is by following. So B, if we give you a B E inside the B cross of E cross, it gives you X inside of V, but the V is in B, right? It's the same thing. Then the action is being given by the following B E x and x, as I said that this is x viewed as a uh, left e vector space, so equal to e x b, okay, just opposite way, right, because this one I keep the left action by e free, you put a b this side then uh, it can't do it anymore, right, so this is uh, uh, give you a thing, so you see I mean uh, I recover, uh, start with the information space I will get this in, this also is a very accidental uh, isomorphism that in U11, unitary group of two, uh, two variable, you always get a quaternions time to the same. So this is like a universal property, right? But not for, not for a unitary group of three elements. For two elements, it's the same. Okay, so now I defined, um, now I define a modular problem. So, so for any u prime, I use a prime here because later on I use a really not a prime, later on. Uh, it's open, g prime, q hat, q hat, I mean the hat always means q turns to z hat, z hat is a product of zp. On uh, open, compact, so uh, we define Define the modular uh, stack. Um, code I called X U prime. I sometimes put prime over here. Sorry, too many prime. It's stupid. Yeah. Uh, uh, over spec of F prime. So F prime already wrote that somewhere, right? Uh, as follows. Okay, so so there are uh, x prime for any uh, f prime scheme. 
uh, s. Uh, there a point in x prime u prime of s, right? Is a is a quadruple. Is a quadruple. Um, Um, of the following subjects, A, Yota, Lambda, Kappa. Uh, you can imagine, so this A, A of S is abelian scheme. Uh, of relative dimension, because 2G, that is E um, over Q. Not like be before, I have only G, now I have double dimension. Uh, there's a yota is O of E goes to uh, anamorphism A of S, right? So uh, such as that, the trace of yota uh, of X acts on Lie algebra of A of S, right? Is equal to uh, the trace by one plus phi two of X for any x inside O of E. Uh, remember, this makes sense because this thing is inside uh, f prime, right? This is inside actually O f prime, right? So actually, this first two property, right? Um, So, so there's a lambda uh, okay. Lambda A to A dual is a polarization. Which induces um, whose Rossetti involution. Um, induce the complex conjugation, uh, the complex conjugation on O of E. Okay, so that's the something uh, there. The last part of the kappa is a polarization, so it's a lambda hat. Lambda, as I remember, is a lattice there. And uh, my, um, this thing has a symplectic form, cross S T. H1 as Z hat, I don't know, I mean the, okay, so this is, uh, this both of them are, are, are really a sheaf, right, at the base, this thing, right, when I write this thing, this doesn't make any sense, but this really means you have to move to there, so it's a, it's an orbit, it's not really one morphism, is a, is a um, U prime orbit of, um, uh, a similitude is of school Hermitian um, OE forms. Okay, this is a, a, a this is a lazy way to write on it. You first put the four level and structure module n, and then uh, then you take limits. So I write an orbit. It depends how to interpret the orbit means, right? Because this doesn't make any sense. This, this, I mean, this is eta shift. This is a uh, this constant shift, right? There's nowhere to be isomorphism. Okay, it's just a lazy way, but it's always the way defined. Okay. What? Yeah, it's just just, or you are pro pro eta, or you want to that way. Okay, <laughs> then then this isn't done, you know. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can use the Proeta uh, language. So, so, so the whole thing I want to do, spend so much time with this thing, is that, well, A0 uh, defines a point. The whole thing is in this x prime, u prime, for u prime is maximal, maximal order, right? So it's a, a maximum order. We can stabilize it over lambda 
in uh, G prime of Q hat, right? So the maximum order inside. Okay, so I construct a Schumacher curve, include uh, this abelian variety as a one point, and uh, so uh, so that's the the thing. I pretty much succeed. So now I will introduce some. Um, so I want to introduce want to introduce some additional structure. On x prime and u prime, so I mean some local system, some Petersburg group. So for u prime, small, sufficient small, then there is a bit, there is a um, there's a, a universal abelian variety on a u prime. To x u prime. Okay, so it's actually it's uh, what I really mean that this x u prime actually is representable by a universal one, and this actually is a curve. This actually is a curve of f prime, and uh, it is not geometrically connected. So this actually, if x u prime of c at one place tau will be finite union of gamma i. Some some finite union. Um, well, once you have this thing, then you can define many beautiful things you want. Uh, the first thing will be um, the term hom homology group. So you can have so you have a local system a u prime. There's a local system. We have the arm filtration. This filtration is very important for us. Omega a u prime. Then uh, this omega a u. There. So this is the typical uh, the arm filtration. And uh, this filtration, everything has action by O of e, right? You have a type um, type. Phi one, phi two, and uh, the, the the very interesting thing is, uh, so one side is phi one, other side is phi phi two, so they actually um, action by, okay, so we can decompose, we can decompose on uh, the sequence, Uh, this tensor F, okay? So don't prime, but don't worry. This is just a vector, uh, vector bundle <laughs> of some number field. So uh, decomposition is pretty much safe. Not like OF before, your decomposition, you know, I mean, that's, uh, you have some problem. Uh, you will have Samson, uh, eigenspace there, WAU prime of tau C goes to I will decompose the I will define different name M A U of tau W A U prime and a tau transpose. So now you understand why I use uh, the W here because you don't denote the middle as M. M is more like uh, uh, Cartier. Uh, later on will be a Dirichlet module. So then we apply uh, the Gauss money. The, the middle one is a local system. But this is a local system. This one has a, uh, this is a local system. This is just a vector bundles. So in other words, the, the middle one has a, has, has a the, the, the Gauss money connection. So there is a Gauss money connection in the middle. So apply. On this M, 
AU tau. So we will get the following uh, typical morphism called the Cordero Spencer map. I'm going to write everything out of, of tau C goes to M AU prime tau nobula M AU prime tau tensor on omega X U prime one. Um, then goes to I mean I continue this morphism goes to W AU prime tau transpose omega AU prime. You get this morphism, right? So this this composition together uh, sometimes called uh, Gaussmanian. So this get a Cordero Spencer map. So we the composition gives. Uh, the Cordaria so it's a W A U prime tau C W A W tau V turns to omega X U prime. Okay? So uh, this is a rank two bundle. This is rank over two. Um, because of my decomposing of phi one plus phi two structure there. So if you take a determinant, okay, if you take a determinant, so we will get a determinant of AU prime tau uh, C goes to determinant AU prime tau. Oh, there's one's a T. Which one has a T there? Uh, this has a T. There turns uh, omega XU uh, square, right? You got this thing. Uh, one's a uh, the transpose, it's negative one there. So uh, this actually is isomorphism. This will give you this actually, I guess even even top one is isomorphism. Sorry. Um, so this is uh, so this is isomorphism there. So this is isomorphism. So so in this way, uh, if we define so if we define n u prime equal to uh, this one times this one. Of C of determinant A U prime of tau, uh, then this one give you isomorphism to omega X U tensor square. So this will give you uh, the Cordero Spencer map. Okay, that's actually is nice. So when you keep a variety variety and the dual together, that's always the case. So in, in a typical situation, a elliptic curve, then uh, usually don't write the transpose here. Actually, sometimes you get confused. Why suddenly it became um, like a little curve case? In, a, in a, I mean, uh, there's a, all of the one rank one bundle. I always get confused why this one is a square of other bundle. Okay, give you um, the nice thing. So you remember that the fault in the highs uh, is, I mean, so so. Fault in the heights is a uh, a zero somehow is a bundle. Um, is a, is a height of matrix line bundle. This is shape, right? The degree of matrix bundle this is shape. So here we what do we need to do that? So the fault in the height we want to compute the so h a zero should be somehow the degree of the NU bar. So this is uh, the Hermitian line bundle on OK to be constructed. So right now, we just have a bundle and, uh, and a modular curve. 
Well, first of all, we need to put a metric there. Second thing, we need to put an integral structure there, right? Um, for the metric, there's no problem. Okay, for the metric, we can use this morphism to put an integral structure here, right? It's the same thing. For the metric, so this is the same thing as degree omega x u bar that turns a square. For the metric, we can choose the following thing dz equal to twice imaginary of z if, if there's a for uniformization, if you have h mapped to x u prime at a pri place tau, at a place v there, right? So v divided infinity. I mean, the, you have the bundle. I simply can put this in. Um, but there's no nature way. to uh, put an integral structure. Not, not nature, no good way. So maybe now, uh, now is, now I think there's a, recently there's a paper by uh, Kissing and uh, Pappas. They have a different paper. At least when I write this paper, there's no construction uh, how to extend the modular problem good way to their uh, OF prime schemes, right? But now they have, so that's a, but I didn't really check that. The reason is there's a group G prime I defined. Uh, we have some problem uh, at a place, uh, divide uh, the discriminant of the quaternion and also the place where E of, uh, is ramified of Q. So there's a there's a two problem there. Uh, if everything is fine, there is a something called a, called a hyperspatial uh, level structure given by Kordowitz. Then you can define an integral structure. But in general, um, there's some complexity. There's a some problem. So the way, where's time? Okay. So what we are doing is make a connection to Shimura curve, simpler Shimura curve. Okay, so so we want um, we want to use a, a, a simpler Shimura curve x u to study. Uh, to study x u prime. In the simplest Shimura curve, actually, uh, the integral structure, the integral structure on x u uh, was already studied. By um, a dream field. I mean, at least in the Carrillo. And uh, this simple Shimura curve, um, uh, the structure much simple. You see, because there's no E there. So the simple structure does not involve E at all. But a better thing that simple, simple Shimura curve, it does not parameterize anything. So it's not a peer type. So the Carillon studied that, but I put a PD group in infinite level. At a very infinite level, they put integral structure. Then they can descend it to the downstairs. So the, you get a scheme. The scheme does not parameter anything. You put a very a high level, it parameters the PTZO group. The current year studied the, the integral structure of PTZO groups, so they get the integral structure of the Shimura curve. So I just uh, basically review this, uh, this the dream field, the current year theory. The neonic Schumacher 
x. Okay, so this is a typical. Uh, if the x prime is so called a PL type, this x is called a abelian type, right? So x prime x has a same geometric connected component in the infinite level, but they other otherwise they don't have much uh, relation between them. So I write a g be the uh, the group f of q of b cross is much more simple, right? So this is a simpler one, and uh, b of f quaternion algebra everything. So we put the h c cross of g of r. So this is a typical Shimura map. The Shimura map. Is it defined by uh, uh, z equals x plus yi to okay? I mean, uh, well, I mean, I put put x y next to y x. So I, let me write this in. Let's say I make isomorphic this into g l two of a real number plus the quaternions uh, to the, you remember my quaternion algebra split at one place, not split the other thing. So this is a standard quaternion. Right? So that's a, that's a quaternion you learn somewhere. Right? So you get this picture, you get this uh, Shimura map. Once the Shimura map, you define the Shimura curve. So this data allow you to define. Um, so, so this data define a Shimura curve. So this this G with the H give you a Shimura curve. X of U, I mean the all U's curves. And this U is G of Q H open compact, right? OK, you have this in. All of the Shimura curves are defined of f. I mean, it has a canonical of, of f. As I say, it's a very interesting thing to notice that if you read my paper or my book, you, I always start with in, incoherent quaternion algebra. The reason I do that is because when you define a Shimura curve, you always start with a subfield of a complex number, say so total real number field embedding to uh, complex numbers. I find that this one is, of course, it's, a, it's construction by data, but it's very superficial when we discuss Shimura variety of F. Because when you start to say I'm my Shimura, variety, Shimura curve defined by the complex embedding, then you have to discuss the complex embedding to other places. Right? So I usually start with incoherent one. Incoherent one means I just, I just erase this part. When I erase this part, it means that my quaternion algebra will be totally definite or I came down place. Um, and that's actually very nice. The reason is if a V is a finite place dividing this ramification state, then I get a dream field uniformization. So somehow I find this, all, this incoherent quaternion algebra is convenient to define Shimura variety. This is one reason. Second reason is that in my construction, I will use a very representation. And I use a very representation, you need, to, you need to start with a, a Schwarz function over some, 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 some space. And my incoherent space actually is a, is a, is a much natural way to do that. So, 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 so there's, there's a good reason to start incoherent. But I might, in this lecture, I will not do that. OK, so, so if I choose. Um, so when you, uh, let, me, let me define a model here. So if uh, the x u of tau c will be g of q of plus or minus g of q h over u, right? It's just this is a standard description. Now I want to put an integral structure. Well, it is a curve, so it's a, it's a very nice thing. I can have. So there's some facts. So, so when you 
u uh, is included in you know, 1 plus n o um, b h cross for n greater than 3, then genus x of u is greater than 2. Oh, one thing is funny. So th this is the geometric component. My x u defined of f as a curve of f is always uh, connected. Right? So this genus may be the geometric genus. What? It's F prime or yeah, F? It's, it's, it's a reflection? Yes. What? It's F prime or F. No, I don't have a reflex field anymore. Everything is, is a F. So, so this is the funny thing. So, I, I, so what I really mean is every geometric com component, F bar, every geometric component. So um, what I can say? F bar, F bar, so, okay. Uh, the genus geometric connected component is always uh, greater than two. So this means that XU, XU has on a minimum model, right? I mean, if you have a curve, genus greater than two, has a minimum model, regular model, x of u is naive one over some O F U O F there. Oh, I, I let me let me try to understand. Okay, uh, I put it the same. So x u has a model, uh, has a geometric. I mean, x u map to spec of F. So I said this is connected, but not a geometric connected. So the field of constant on uh, here is spec of F u. Okay. So there is a field here. This will be geometrically connected, right? So so maybe my genius really means that over F u. Okay. So so has a minimal regular model over O F u, right? You have you have something like that. And uh, so uh, usually, <laughs> if you have a compatible system of curves or generic fiber, each curve has a regular model. Uh, this does not imply that your regular model also form a projective system, right? You, I mean, you cannot, you have a rational map from one curve to other one, integral model, but not necessarily, this map not necessarily defined of every point. So miraculously, the proof actually is not trivial. I spent a lot of time to prove that. So. The compatible system um, uh, defined by this way actually uh, extended to integral models. Uh, this, is this is, uh, I mean, the I didn't expect such a thing is true, but actually it's true there. So, so the the fact. So this x u. Um, forms uh, inside G O Q hat open compact and uh, U I mean sorry uh, U is small enough uh, in this sense small means that it's included the one plus n O B uh, small uh, for uh, um, project system. So it means that you have x u, uh, x u prime u. This is inside x of u, x u prime. This is the real morphism. Originally, this is only the rational morphism, right? It's actually really become real morphism here. So it's a, that's a that's a very interesting thing. Over O f u prime or over O f. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, everything of O F, right? Yeah. Uh, over modular curve, and uh, this is actually true because you have modular interpretation. Uh, a Shimura curve is also true, but this is actually is approved using many other facts.
Okay, so now I wanted to find uh, the thing, right? So, so one thing uh, you can define, uh, you can use this in models to define uh, the Hodge bundle. L of u. So what I really mean, the L u, L of u, out of the generic fiber, is omega x of u. But uh, when you extend this thing to the special fiber, be really careful. This morphism is projective, but not the, the, the sometimes regular morphism, right? So you you have this uh, the differentials. If x u prime mapped x u is it's is ramified, you pull back your differentials. Right? Let me do this way. Uh, but this morphism, if it is, is eta morphism, of course, then differential pull back is differential here. If not eta, you pull back is not. So, but of course, I mean, every such a morphism is eta almost everywhere. So you use a gluing process to define uh, this, uh, this system. So such as that, let me give a name, if I write this one, as a pi u prime u, you basically want pi L u, L u prime. So this is, a, so in some sense, this L u, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, this one in, uh, in stack sense, right? In stack sense. So it's not a, a usual uh, differential, so the differentials will be compatible with the pullback. So you have a different such a thing. Did not get it. So where where this LU lives? So what? what what is this LU? It's a it's a line bundles. Oh yeah, LU. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's uh, the pick x of u, right? You have tensor q. Yeah, it allows some q coefficient. But you pull back. Means that some some powers go with back. Yeah. So you have this LU. Yeah. 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 So no, this is for whole whole. But you put on x of u. So you extend this bundle on So I get some something. Uh, it's called some uh, one forms in a stacky sense, right? It's not a in a, because of a regular one. If you do regular one, you have a trouble. You pull back in, go back, you will have ramification. But when u is so sufficient and small, uh, the, the way it is constructing that, you, you construct part by part, then glue them together. Okay, so this is uh, a few things. Okay, so now I need to construct some some structures, yeah. As I said, that I don't have. A, I mean, this Schumacher curve does not parameterize nice thing, but parameter something. Okay, so so I want to uh, uh, construct uh, some PDS group. On x u, uh, when u is very small, in the x u, when u is inside, it's so small it does not even have a pro p part. It only have o um, g q p part. You see, and only it's, a, it's, a, it's a very small <coughs> because I take limits. Um, it probably can do slightly big. So, so what I'm going to do is the following thing. I have uh, this, uh, this G equals B cross there. So this acts on, um, also acts on B, right? V equals B. So I have lambda OB, uh, this action uh, there. So, so I have lambda heta there. Um, and I don't want to talk too much. Let, 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 let me let me let me for for simplicity, 
uh, simply write u equals o b p cross, right? I just defined something simple. I don't want to make life too complicated. So I defined h, uh, there's a u, u p as a p little group defined by most of the way you can define by b p cross o b p, right? It's just, just, just a group. Then cross x. So my x is projector limit of x u. I define it formally, right? I'm, later on I will tell you this formal definition actually makes sense. Uh, this thing has action by a b cross, so I quote it by um, uh, o b p cross, right? So this one is a p little group over x over o b p cross. So let me write this x u p, okay? So I define the p group in this infinite level structure. So prime to p level structure, I take a maximum. I don't worry because I study my Schumer variety reduction at the p, so I don't really care about anything away from p. So I make some maximum level structure. Of this one, I define the p little group. Then you worry, oh, come on, this level structure probably doesn't make much sense. Um, but in fact, um, okay, the remark is a very important thing. So this p little group cannot descend to any uh, curve of finite level, but for any n, h u p p to the n descends to uh, a Schumacher final level, u p cross u p a Schumacher a final level. So in other words, I mean, uh, this piece of group basically constructed by defined the finite uh, group scheme, it's a finite level. Then I take limits on top. But the limits itself, unfortunately, cannot descend. But each final level can be descend. Okay? This is like a pro et al. Yeah. Okay, so now I fix. Uh, so let P be a finite place. Place of F dividing over P. Uh, the beautiful thing is the following: that that okay, let K to be O um, uh, uh, F P. I take a maximum I ramify extension. So in other words, this is a width vector, so whatever completion. P completion like that, right? Oh no 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 no. That's the stupid. Then times yeah times F F O F right? Something like that. Now you will know what I mean, just completion. I don't write so much stuff. Make it confusing. Completion. Maximal. Parameterified extension. OF. P. Okay? So, so I can see it as X x of u um, p at a p to be a limit of, well, this u p, x u p, x of p. I make best change to this OK there, right? So I get something. So this is the Shimura curve defined of OK where I want to study reductions. So, so another fact that's very important factor is the factor so this p little group, H U P, has on integral model
over x u p uh, this p. Okay, the integral model. Let me write x u p there. So, so I extend my integral model, but this is very important because I'm going to study uh, the deformation theory of a point there. So the deformation theory we study that. And not only that. So uh, as a usual, the x The let me, I mean, as you usually see, so the completion. Something easy to check or where it comes from? Okay, so the idea the following. idea we use, uh, of course, you have to use the PR type Schumer variety, right? There's no way to extend a principal group to special fiber unless you have something. So what do you do is the following. So I have the Schumer curve. I, I don't know how to study it. Then I make some best change. Once the best change, I can embed into some Schumer curve or PR type. But I pick up this thing, pick up the best change so that it's split at P. So in other words, the, the integral stretch will not be affected. Then I have a, a universal abelian variety. Universal abelian variety has integral structure. Then I, ex I extend this thing using this uh, whole, whole, whole way to do that. And this is, is not affected by the fact that you are working on the tower on varying this. Yeah, is this compatible with different views? Yes. So is this choice of base change compatible with different views when you go from tower? Oh, no, this is the infinite level. What do you mean? Uh, yes, yeah, so you are working with different levels, OK? Yes. And what you are describing is on the, on the limit? Or? On limit. Yeah, of course, I don't know how to define. Of course, once that is done, then you can descend to the final level. Each finite subgroup can be just on the final level. But the whole piece of group is in the infinite level. OK, so that is great. So I will not talk about that. So the Hodge filtration, so the Hodge filtration. on the Dunet crystal um, may give you induced a short exact sequence. So we get this in, have, uh, we're not going to write then this in, or P prime goes to Dunet module HP goes to Dunet module FP. Oh, I forget one thing. I mean, once the integral model of this thing, of course, doesn't mean anything. You have to say the, the formal completion at x u p p formal completion. So this is a formal completion at its special fiber. Special fiber is the universal universal deformation of the h u p respected and uh, the special fiber, right? You have, you have to say something like that, right? Otherwise, it's uh, useless. How can you do this thing? You have to say, my differentials, I mean, that, that I, uh, somewhere I have used a Kodera Spencer map, right? So I have to say this thing. So this will give you, so this will give you a Kodera Spencer map. So this will give you a Kodera Spencer map of P that Determinant of WPT, determinant of WP goes to uh, the X of P square. So remember, this is just error. Let me write down about error, right? My Hodge bundle, LUP tensor square. You get a map here, but this map can be computed. This map is called a negative delta B at a P. And so this delta B and a P um, is a divisor. So it's either uh, the, the trivial, if, if, if a B, P is split, and the, then the P itself is not split. So, 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 so you use a principal group to, uh, you, so you get another one to calculate the 
So this gives you integral structure. Okay, so I'm almost there. So now, uh, just a few words that we're not going to, um, uh, uh, I don't have much time left. I just give you a little bit of idea uh, how uh, this quaternionic Shimura curve can be used to study uh, the pier type of Shimura curve, right? So the idea is a, it's a bit of funny. So, so, so the group, so, okay, so for the very fast way, uh, we have this G prime. G prime is inside B cross of U cross of F, right? Cross. Then we have this G, right? G is equal to B cross, right? So uh, this one can, can uh, uh, this one has nature embedded there, and uh, and also has a compatible. So I can put the uh, the H C cross mapped here. When C mapped here, if we put everything together, then uh, this H prime here, they also have H mapped to G of R. This H and H prime not compatible. The, the, the different Hodge structure. So if I write it very clearly, uh, this H prime is equal to H cross HE. There's a relation. HE is C cross mapped to E turns to R cross given by, you remember I have CM type 515 nearby. So this one goes to, this one equal to uh, phi phi 1 says the phi 1, for example, c to the g, right? And, and this z goes there to 1 z z. So it missed the first fact. So, so these are two, uh, uh, two different Hodge map, two different Shimura map. So even the complex points are so close, uh, as a scheme of f, uh, they're totally different. So this is when you start Shimura variety, you know, this is very different because the reciprocity law is different. They describe a different way of Galois action, completely different way. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so the relation, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird relation. Relation is the following. Relation is, so this, uh, this action, uh, this G, of course, the first one, so you have the following, you have this, uh, Shimura variety x g prime h map to Shimura variety of prime b cross u e cross f cross h prime. According to th by this formula, this means that my h prime the maps to both facts. So this is equal to Shimura variety of B prime, B cross H, cross Shimura variety of U cross HE. I have this morphism. In fact, if I modulate the diagonal action, this is actually isomorphic. So that's the relation between this Shimura variety and this Shimura variety. This is X prime, this is X. So X, X prime is differed by a twist, a twist of some CM type. Right? It's a twist. It twists by this thing. Right? So x, so x prime uh, the, it, it is a twist. A twist of x. Right? Twist of x, that's a, that's a and all of these things, this has a, has a universal family abelian variety, the pedizal group. This has a abelian variety, pedizal group. The pedizal group will also twist. So what do you mean the pedizal group twist? It means the theta module are twist. So the theta module of the pedizal group defined this one by abelian varieties, and pedizal group defined by this quite a stupid method, that twist to each between each other. But not twist by a big deal, twist by some same type. Right? So, so this two pedizal group has no relation to each other, but they are pedizal, but the theta module are twist to each other. So, so this gives you that, so the, so the A, U, P infinity uh, is a twist of H 
uh, u something like that, I define as above. So in a sense that the theta module of, of p infinity you call the theta module h u turns the theta module of some i. So i is a pitiful group. It's, it's a, it's a one-dimensional representation. So this is a the one time here representation is a, a local system, OEP local system. Define over. So this product is this product. Define over, over uh, this Schumer uh, variety you cross you there. Then here, uh, what do you do? I mean, here, uh, then, I mean, what do we care? We don't really care about the of group. We care about this exact sequence. This, this, this Hodge filtration. So we need to only figure out, we need to understand how they are, do not, do not, do not crystal are related. Unfortunately, this, this kissing functor can uh, read out from the color representation to the crystal. So at the end, uh, so this, uh, let me try to see. What? Over which base? Because there we, it looks like we have to work over a formal scheme, which is an awful thing. No, this is not a formal scheme. This is just a. You said that you have to complete. What? You said that you need to complete at some point. You said. No, no, no. I said this is a fact. Fact XU is the integral model of this n. One factor that the universe, the, the principal group at a special fiber universal deformation is the Shimura curve the deformation itself. Uh, the, the completion of Shimura curve itself. Now we don't need this fact. So where we work? What is the base? We work over a scheme over, over a scheme. Which is this projected projective limit. Yes. And then we apply breakage into this kind of things? It's very strange. What does it mean? Now I define the crystal there. Yeah. Doing a crystal. This is where this is a both them local system where defined thing. Where, where we compare in some Okay, okay, let me let me try to What is the base? Just to see that the base is reasonable to apply something we know. Base is oh you mean which scheme are you talking about? Oh scheme is, is here. So I will construct okay, so I use this integral structure to construct integral structure here. I don't have time, so I try to take a shortcut. So here, I spend a lot of time studying the integral structure here. I get an integral structure there. Right? How functorial is the kissing functor? Oh, it's very good, actually. The kissing functor apply kissing uh, functor. So we will get that the Duden module with filtration a u p infinity equal to the module of h of u tends to the module of i. So, so then this one gives you the relation between uh, differentials on x an X prime. Well, there is something which I don't really, uh, I'm missing. So here, these kind of statements are relative statements over the base which- Oh yeah, relative statement, yeah. Kizin, Bray Kizin is not a relative theory. As far as I know, it, it applies only in the absolute case. Sometimes we are very, still very far from the relative. Oh, right, right, right. Um, uh, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely So I actually I apply this at one point. <laughs> yeah, because for CMI billion variety, I already know extended has a good reduction everywhere. Okay, because yeah, otherwise I would be extremely surprised. You're, you're, you asked a good question. Yi Chao and I discussed this thing for a long time, trying to understand the relative version, could not get it. Yeah, you're, you're right. I'll just be lazy, cheating, you know. <laughs> okay, maybe we should have finished here. Sorry, it's a bit of overtime. Yeah.